Okay, so welcome everyone to our first uh, meeting of UQSL for the fall 2021 semester. So uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Xiaogan Wen from MIT, who will be telling us about generalized symmetry, local fusion end category, and their holographic point of view. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I've been following this uh, uh, seminar series uh, last semester, uh, maybe since its beginning, you know, I've learned a lot. And uh, so I'm very uh, happy uh, uh, to give my contribution and uh, to talk about uh, some recent work on, uh, on a new understanding, a new way of looking at uh, symmetry. So those are uh, some, uh, uh, some of the preprint, uh, uh, many of them published. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so here we are talking about a, a, a symmetry in the quantum system. So what is a quantum system? And uh, so basically uh, we are talking about the so-called bosonic quantum system. And the bosonic quantum system is defined uh, by, uh, uh, by three, uh, three things. And uh, one of them is a, uh, is a is the Hilbert space. So here the Hilbert space have a structure uh, that, is a, uh, uh, that is a tensor product of a many small Hilbert space. But the small Hilbert space, each small Hilbert space live on the side. So we have a triangulation of space. space. So space have a lot of vertices. So each vertex in the space, uh, we have a Hilbert space. Uh, the basis vector are labeled by G. Here we assume G belong to a Z2 group. So there's a two, uh, two dimensional uh, uh, Hilbert space on each uh, vertex. And then the total Hilbert space is a tensor product of uh, all the little Hilbert space on each uh, vertex. So that's uh, the first part of a quantum system. And the second part is that we have a so-called local operator algebra, the algebra of local operator. The local operator basically is an operator acting this uh, Hilbert space uh, on each side, like a two-dimensional Hilbert space, or on nearby site, like a two side or three sites nearby site. So those operator uh, generate uh, algebra it's called the uh, uh, algebra of a local operator. So that's a second important ingredient of a bosonic system, bosonic quantum system. And uh, the, the third ingredient is a, is a Hamiltonian. And uh, the Hamiltonian actually is time evolution operator. The vector in this uh, Hilbert space is our state. And the Hamiltonian or this uh, e to the i h uh, describe how, maybe let me write this. Uh, so e to the i h t, uh, this time evolution operator describe how uh, how a state vector would evolve uh, in time. So these are three ingredients define the quantum system. Okay. So the Hilbert space uh, algebra of local operator under the local Hamiltonian, which is the sum of the local operators. So this uh, this is Hamiltonian sum of local operators. Okay. So next we can define uh, the quantum system with a symmetry. So with a Z2 global symmetry, what is that? Okay, usually symmetry is defined by a transformation. So we have a unitary operator defined transformation. So this unitary operator is a tensor product of so-called a poly X operator, which is simply a, a, so we call the spin flip operator, turning one to minus one and the minus one to one. This is a flip operator, okay which is unitary. So the tensor product of this operator, which acting on each side, gave us a total unitary transformation. So this unit transformation, W squared equal to one. So it generates a Z2 group, okay. And once we have a symmetry transformation operator and we can modify our local operator algebra. So this is the key. So with the symmetry, the algebra local operator is modified. And this uh, algebra is actually, it's an algebra of a symmetric operator, which is commute uh, with a symmetry uh, transformation, uh, which is invariant under symmetry transformation. Okay. Then the Hamiltonian is a sum of those symmetric operator. So that is a, a, a kind of standard way to view symmetry. 
But however, here I want to emphasize that uh, this algebraic way seems more fundamental because standard way, usually people define symmetry by transformation, symmetry transformation. But actually what you really care about is the uh, algebra for local symmetric operators. So therefore, uh, symmetry is actually defined by this uh, uh, algebra, this algebra of a local symmetric operator. In particular, if you have isom isomorphic operator algebra, then we will have equivalent uh, symmetry. And this point of view is uh, very important uh, in this uh, uh, talk. Okay, so that's uh, some basic uh, setup. So any questions here? Yeah, please feel free to interrupt me and ask questions. Okay, so what is this uh, uh, operator algebra? So actually in our case, the operator algebra is generated by these two simple operator. One is the X poly X operator, uh, which certainly commute with a, with a W, which is the product of the X operator. And also we have a pair of a Z operator and Z is a poly Z operator, which, is, which act on the plus one, give us a plus plus one, act on the minus one, give us a minus minus one. So it's a, so plus one minus one is the eigenvector of Z with the eigenvalue plus and the minus one. Okay. And uh, this a single Z operator is not invariant. I a single Z operator and the semi transmission changing sign. And uh, so actually the single Z operator form a representation of a group. Uh, so we call this a representation of a group in physics we call charge. So Z carry charge or Z is a charge operator because it's a, it's a its transformation as a particular representation of this uh, uh, Z2 group, okay. But the, however, a pair for this Z operator is invariant. So therefore it is a, these two are symmetric operator. So this is standard way to write down a local symmetric operator, which also very simple. But here we want to use a particular way to write this uh, uh, local operator. And this uh, particular way is very helpful. So in some sense, we try to stress that the local operator is not that local. The reason is that although like this pair of operator is quite local, only acting nearby two sites. But however, when you multiply these operators together and uh, this can join like uh, uh, this IGA can be viewed as a, a, a small segment of string. But however, when you multiply two strings together, you get the longer string, you get IK. And the i and the k will separate further away. Uh, we can say the string getting longer, which a string is connecting i and j or i and the k. So we call this pair of operator a string operator, which connecting i and the j. And then when you multiply them together, you get the longer and the longer string. So that's that's this local operator is not that local in that sense. Okay. And uh, and also this XI operator is an on-site operator. It's a very local, okay? But we can multiply uh, those operators on bunch of sites, like uh, uh, for example, on this side, on this side, on this side. Then we have a, a three-side cluster. So we have a patch. So therefore those, those are our patch operator, okay? So the patch operator really is a, is a product of a, xi, but i live on certain patch, certain region in a space, uh, which is connected region, let's say. So therefore using, using those uh, string operator and the patch operator, we can write down this uh, local operator algebra in this way, which a string can connect and the patch also connect the patch one, in the patch one multiply patch two, we get a patch one and two, so patch getting grow bigger. So, so we have this, uh, uh, this string and a patch operator. And uh, also uh, when the string and the patch operator uh, multiply together, we have two situations. If a string and a patch have this kind of uh, uh, relation, then they under commute. However, if a string are within the patch, uh, two string and is out, both are outside the patch, then they commute. So uh, we can use a string operator and a patch operator to describe this uh, uh, operator uh, algebra, and which, you, which is helpful actually. Okay, so this is a, uh, uh, this is a, a operator algebra we, using this operator to describe. 
and here we also want to uh, say that uh, uh, there is a better way to define symmetry, actually, not using this uh, operator we define. This operator is a product of X on every side in the space. And here we notice that this patch operator actually is a, is a part of this W operator, which is a, which a product X on the, on, the, on the region. And actually this patch operator is enough for us to define symmetry because uh, we can require, we can using patch operator to define symmetry by requiring the, this local, local operator, symmetric operator commute with the patch operator as long as this, uh, the position I is uh, far away from the boundary of a patch. As long as our operators either inside the patch or outside the patch far away from boundary, then this commutant is the same, okay. And this is a, this is a better way uh, to define a, a, a local uh, a oper symmetric operator, okay. And uh, so, and uh, why this is a better? Because uh, using this way, uh, we can using patch operator to measure charge. Remember, our local operator are charge neutral. They form a trivial repetition, they are invariant. But however, we have a sense that this, uh, our string operator is a charge pair. It's carry a non-trivial reputation on one end, the other non-trivial reputation on the other end. But uh, together, they became a trivial reputation. But the once we have a patch operator, uh, we can measure each end, reputation each end uh, uh, locally, uh, uh, like, like this. We can make a string and a patch operator have this kind of relation. And then they under commute. So this under commute really means that uh, this patch operator detect the charge of one end of a string. And uh, so we detect non-trivial representation for one end of a string. So in this sense, it's a, it's an advantage. Okay. Although our local operator carry no charge, it's a uh, neutral. But however, our patch operator can detect the charge carried by one end. So this notion is also very important. Okay, so uh, so from this point of view, uh, we see that uh, uh, we can view uh, we can view the symmetry as a fusion category. So we have the connection of symmetry and the fusion category. And in this point of view, we can view the local symmetric operator as a morphism. As a morphism, okay. And uh, however, here's a key: the one string end is a charge, is an object. So, uh, so the single string end is object. So this is string operator have is two object. It's a fusion of two object, e i e j at i side i and side j. Okay. So so we have this kind of uh, notion. To be more precise. You know, string in general should be oriented. So one end is object, another end is a dual object. There's a charge conjugation. But here, the example we have here is self-dual, so we don't distinguish this. Okay. So therefore, from here we can see that uh, this uh, this uh, local symmetric operator or this morphism can move end of string. It's really from this fusion because this fusion. So this is a morphism. After this. Uh, a uh, uh, fusion of this uh, morphism, the end of the string is uh, moved from J to K. So this J to K. So, so this uh, morphism, this, uh, this operator actually moved the end of the string. So therefore, so we have the morphism from EI to EJ and from EJ to EI. So from this point of view, we can say that I and J are isomorphic. You know, they are kind of equivalent. Okay. So, so, so therefore from this uh, operator algebra, we can interpret operator algebra, this uh, string ij to string jk became a string jik as this kind of uh, fusion rule. You know, the ei ej, ej ek fuse into ei ek so that we get that uh, ej ej fusion became identity, trivial. So we get the fusion, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and because we have this isomorphic, isomorphism, so we can caution out this equivalence relation defined by this isomorphic uh, isomorphism. So therefore, uh, the equivalent object is a trivial object 
one and this e. And this these two objects plus this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, morphism form this uh, uh, symmetric fusion category, which is rep z two. <laughs> okay. So this is a, a kind of a way to link the operator algebra uh, to the fusion category. Okay. And this really is to say that uh, we can using the fusion category, symmetric fusion category rep z two to characterize um, to describe a symmetry. So this is the famous uh, Tanaka duality. So we can describe symmetry using the group transformation, using the transformation which form a group, symmetry of a group. Or we can use in the fusion of representation of a symmetry. And these two, these two description carry the same amount of information. So they are equivalent. Okay, so this is the kind of a, a categorical view uh, to describe a symmetry. Um, sorry, I have a, sorry, sorry, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so when you describe that, you say that I should be far away from the boundary. Why is that? Uh, that's a, to define this uh, a symmetric, uh, local symmetric operator, uh, because uh, uh, this uh, the boundary has some ambiguities. So actually, in in this definition, we don't really care about the uh, the boundary. You know. We can we can add some arbitrary operator on the boundary, okay, and as long as in the middle is a product of x, so that will be the symmetry. So the, there's an ambiguity to the boundary. Another thing I don't want to say that this operator is a, should be a local operator because of the Hamiltonian may contain this operator. But however, if we say i plus one inside the patch and i is outside the patch, then this operator will not commute with this uh, patch operator. So that will be uh, regarded as a. And, uh, so actually, uh, this Tanaka duality uh, have a little bit of twist. It's actually it's not a, a fusion category. Actually, it's a, a it's a higher category. It's fusion n category. If our system have a is in n dimensional uh, space. So here use a little d to re, re, uh, in indicate a space dimension. Okay, and. Uh, and uh, this is because uh, uh, in n-dimensional space, uh, we have a we can have extended object. For example, in three-dimensional space, we can have a two-dimensional membrane, which is called dimension one, and uh, this corresponds to so-called object. And we can have a one-dimensional string, which have a code dimension two, one. <laughs> so that's a one morphism. And the zero-dimensional particle have a co-dimension three, that's a two morphism, okay. And the, the local operator actually is a zero dimension in space time. So that's one half in space time uh, dimension. Also, you can see the minus one dimension in space, <laughs> something like that. And uh, so this is instant time uh, local operator, which is a three morphism. So one, again, one higher co-dimension. Uh, so that's a, that, that is a top morphism. And so those kind of uh, uh, co dimension one, co dimension two, and et cetera, and, uh, and the top morphism, they form, they actually form a fusion n category. So, so here's a picture that is a, uh, so this, uh, this is our membrane, okay? And we have a uh, two kind of membrane, one is in yellow, another in the blue. So that's like a two dots, that's an object. Then the domain wall between two membrane is like a one dimensional defect, and that is like this line. We have two kind of domain walls. So I have a two arrows. So that's a two morphism. And the the domain wall on the domain wall it is a two morphism. This is just connection between two lines. So therefore, from here you can see that uh, actually a higher category is a very natural language to describe extended extension in physical system. Okay. So in our example, our uh, in a three dimensional space. The Z2 charge is a point have a have a zero dimension. So that's correspond to these two morphism. And uh, but uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a 2D membrane and a 1D string, which can be formed by this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, two morphism, can be formed by these particles. Okay. And uh, all this together plus this uh, 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 plus this uh, uh, local symmetry operator, uh, they, they give this uh, fusion three category. So to be more precise, actually in three-dimensional space, this Z2 symmetry 
is really uh, described by uh, 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 by fusion three category. So this is a kind of more uh, more detailed advanced version of the Tanaka duality. So I think this carry uh, more information. So this is a, a kind of a version of Tanaka duality we are going to uh, use. Okay. And uh, so now let's uh, consider uh, another uh, example. So there's someone in the waiting room. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so, uh, so in this, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the second example, uh, we are going to consider the higher symmetry, uh, which is a, a so-called one symmetry. And uh, in, in this example, uh, uh, our Hilbert space changed. So now the, 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 the small Hilbert space live on the link. So each link, we have small Hilbert space. Then the total Hilbert space is a tensor product, those, those, those link Hilbert space, okay? Again, each link Hilbert space are labeled by, the basis vector are labeled by the group. So it's a two dimensional uh, Hilbert space on each link, okay? Then the symmetry, this a Z2, this a one symmetry we have, uh, is generated by the transformation again. But the, now our transformation is defined on all the loops. So we can see, we can have a loop going through those links. For each loop, we can define the transformation, which again is a product of the poly X operator. This X tilt is the same poly X operator, but uh, they are not defined on the link. Okay. Um, Shagan, we, we have a couple of uh, questions in the chat. I yes. actually forced, I muted everyone. So I okay. apologize. Uh, so people can't unmute themselves just to worry about security issues, yeah. I guess. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna. Uh, let's see. Theo asked, I'm confused. I would have thought line operators arise when you have a gauged symmetry as the Wilson lines, whereas a global symmetry should have co-dimension one operator. Uh, you know, right now this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, one okay, this one symmetry is happened to be uh, your theory is right. Uh, this line operator because we are we consider two dimensional space. So this line operator happened to be one symmetry, but in three dimension, the line operator would give us, give us two symmetry. So here is a coincidence. So the uh, so this one symmetry actually is defined by the uh, uh, by co-dimension one operator. So but we are in, in two dimensional space. So co-dimension one operator happened to be a line operator. So so th that's a, that that is the reason. Okay, and uh, so uh, uh, so in this case, uh, uh, but however, this semi transformation is uh, defined for every loop. So therefore, the the local symmetric operator will be the operator commute with uh, every loop operator. You know this kind of uh, uh, Wilson loop operator. Okay, and then similarly, uh, we can using this. Uh, uh, we can. Uh, this local symmetric operator would form uh, algebra. Again, we can we can write algebra in this strange way. Say one type of local symmetric operator is a string operator, which is just a product of those x tilt, which certainly commute with a with a w. Okay. Then another local symmetric operator is a defined on the boundary of a patch. It's a boundary of a patch, or maybe another way to say it's defined on a contractible loop. Okay. On this contract loop, there's a red line here. Then this red line crosses the link. Then on each link, we have this poly Z operator. Certainly the single poly Z operator do not commute with this uh, our string operator, which is given by X, okay? But however, because this contract loop, this contract loop always uh, intersect with uh, this uh, string by two points. So therefore they always commute. Okay. Um, Sheldon, we also have another question. Uh, yes. Is it possible to have co-dimension zero? Co-dimension zero, uh, what? Uh, I think this was from a little while ago. I, I sorry, I think I missed it. It was from maybe four minutes ago, but. Um, uh, uh, yes, I, I think this, uh, let me try to see. This co-dimension is kind of something. Uh, I don't know, the, your, the ordinary symmetry is, uh, is cover everything. So I think that's maybe co-dimension zero. That's called a zero symmetry. You know, you know the, the, the previous example uh, where this uh, same transformation is a product of uh, all X. So therefore this, uh, this uh, defined on all the space. 
uh, that's probably can say it's co dimension zero. And uh, yeah. So, uh, so therefore, that's a. Uh, uh, okay. And the same, then the operator algebra, again, is a, uh, we have this a string operator multiple together, the string gets longer, and the patch operator multiple together, and the patch getting bigger. And again, the string and the patch operator have a similar uh, computation relation. Okay. So here we already see that, so, well, from operator algebra point of view, this uh, Z2 one symmetry in two dimension is very similar to Z2 zero symmetry in two dimension. Okay. So we'll come back to this, uh, uh, this point. And, uh, uh, but here I want to say that uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, symmetry generated by the sub, on the sub manifold is called a, 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 a unform symmetry. And uh, which is uh, uh, this paper really uh, 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 very important and uh, which is really uh, 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 systematically uh, emphasized the importance of this unform symmetry. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this earlier paper uh, have uh, uh, actually already uh, show some uh, similar things and, uh, and uh, which was called a, a D-dimensional gauge-like uh, symmetry. And this kind of uh, symmetry operator is also studied very uh, uh, a lot uh, in, the, in the quantum information theory. It's called a, a logical operator. The logical operator in quantum information theory actually is this type of uh, uh, operator. Okay. So, uh, so from here we can, Using again, we can using the patch operator uh, to measure charge conveniently. For example, uh, instead of using loop uh, to generate symmetry, we can use in the open string. We can use the open string to generate a, uh, one symmetry. And uh, so, so as long as our local operator is far away from a string end, then uh, this this condition will be enough for us to define what is a local symmetric operator. Okay. And uh, then again, then using this uh, local symmetric operator, so our, this, this our symmetry transformation now. Then the boundary of the patch, this loop is our one charge. So our one charge now became one dimensional, not point like became one dimensional loop. So, so our, our open string operator, when they get across this uh, one charge, we can measure this uh, one charge, okay. So this Z2 one charge is measured by, again, by this computation relation. And uh, so, uh, uh, so, so therefore, so, so therefore this, uh, we have this uh, so-called one symmetry. So the N symmetry really is defined by a charge operator. It's uh, because our charge operator is one dimension. So our charge is one dimension. So we call it N symmetry. That's called one symmetry. So this is, uh, uh, this is the, the point. Okay. And in, from this point of view, you can see that uh, the one, the Z two one charge, which is a, a loop-like object. So, so this uh, this one-dimensional loop-like object is like a, a object in a fusion two category. And then, then this a point-like uh, 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 object is a one morphism. But here with the trivial, we don't have a non-trivial one morphism. Then plus this a two morphism, which is formed by this local symmetric operator. So this actually gave us uh, this a uh, uh, two vector Z two. It's a it's a it's a fusion uh, two category. A uh, fusion two category is a is a vector Z two fusion two category. So therefore, this uh, this Z two one symmetry is uh, fully described by this uh, fusion two category two vector Z two. So that is a uh, uh, that is uh, another uh, example. So you can see this higher category and the symmetry is uh, very much related. And our third example uh, actually uh, uh, shows that actually this categorical way to understand symmetry is more general. Actually, it's more general than group way. It's, we can get a symmetry which is beyond the group and even beyond the higher group. And in this example, uh, it's very much like our second example. But here, uh, the here of here the space on each link is labeled by a non-abelian group element. So we have a non-abelian group, a finite group, non-abelian group, which label the basis vector of a Herbert space on each link. Okay. Then our symmetry transformation actually is constructed using a representation. We have a, this R is a matrix representation. So R is a matrix which depend on the group element. 
Then using the matrix, you find an empty link. And then we can construct the trace, which is a product of those matrix uh, around the loop. Okay. And uh, then this, uh, uh, this is an operator icon, this is a basis vector. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, actually this uh, this will uh, this is really a uh, well known uh, Wilson loop operator in the gauge theory, okay, and so so therefore this is uh, 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 so using this uh, uh, using this Wilson loop operator in the gauge theory we can really uh, 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 define this uh, uh, this symmetry operator, okay. Um, and, Shogun, uh, uh, Victor yeah. asked, what is two vec z two? For example, what is endomorphism category of the unit object? <laughs> uh, you know, my cleverest mathematicians, so they told me it's a two vec z2. I don't know exact definition. So my level understanding is that uh, the object of this uh, uh, two vec z2 is a, is a string-like object, okay? Then the, uh, and then the, the, the domain wall between two strings is one dimensional, and that is one morphism. And then the change of one morphism give us two morphism. So that's a, that's a three layers. Okay. And the, why I call the vec z2? Because this string are labeled by the group element. You know, this, because this, this boundary uh, is labeled by the, uh, by the group element. So therefore the, the object are labeled by the group element. Uh, so we have this kind of a, a, a three layer of a structure. And, uh, I know physically what it is, but mathematically, uh, people told me that's a, that's a more like a two vector v two, and certainly to define two vector two, there's many many other things, and uh, so here the uh, we just assume other things uh, automatically in place. So it's, it this be nice to really show this rigorously, but uh, here I just want to indicate the basic structure there. Okay. And uh, in this case, uh, our, our loop operator are given by this uh, representation, so label the representation. So actually, uh, all, we have the, we have, uh, for every representation, we have, this, we have this symmetry transformation, okay. And the symmetry operator should uh, commute with those, uh, all the representation uh, symmetry, okay. And uh, then what is the algebra for local symmetry op symmetric operator? Then, one, one of a, a local operator is simply the open string operator, just a segment instead of a loop, we can do the segment. But for the segment, because R is a matrix, so the matrix index would, uh, would be exposed at a two n. So therefore this open string operator would have this matrix index. And another thing which is very important is this, uh, uh, this operator T operator. This T operator actually when act on this basis vector, they change it, this uh, gij by multiply this uh, h, but the change it gki by h inverse from the right. Okay, so here I have to say that uh, my link are all all oriented, so I didn't indicate. So there's a tail, there's a head, and then uh, when you when you do the transformation on the set i the link with the tail attached to I or with head attached to I transform slightly differently in this way. Then from here, we can see that for this very special transformation, they're local because only two link is modified. And from, because this is special structure, you can see that this product is modified if you modify the link variable in this way. So therefore clearly uh, this operator commute with uh, this uh, uh, symmetry transformation. So they are, they are symmetric uh, operator. So therefore we have this, uh, uh, so our patch operator are, are described this way. And so clearly you can see that the patch operator are really labeled by the group element. You can see for every group element, uh, we have a patch operator. And this became uh, uh, obvious in the not for non-abelian group. For abelian group, representation and the group are isomorphic. So, we cannot tell which is which, but for non abelian group, they're different. From here, we can see that uh, this, uh, the patch operator really labeled as the group open. So therefore the boundary of a patch operator, which our charge object are really labeled by the group element. So this is the reason uh, for us uh, to say that uh, uh, this uh, charge actually is a uh, uh, vec 
G, it's a VEC G rather than rep G. This is a very different. But here I want to emphasize that uh, our symmetry transformation is not uh, even form a group. Usually a symmetry transformation when you compose them, they form a group, but here they don't because our symmetry transformation is a product, is trace of this uh, matrix, which is form representation of the group. And for non abelian group, and when you, when you, when you do this uh, representation, uh, have this tensor product uh, fusion rule with a NIJ case non-trivial. And uh, so therefore, so therefore this operator, when you multiply two together, we get the sum of uh, some other operator with a different representation. And with their coefficient, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a fusion coefficient. And uh, so therefore this is a symmetry, which is beyond the uh, higher group. And so that's how we call this algebraic higher symmetry because it's uh, the symmetry generation operator have some kind of algebra. Okay. So this is a, 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 this is a more general uh, symmetry. And from this more general symmetry, uh, I want to say that this more general symmetry actually in the literature uh, had been studied uh, before in, in a special case of a, a one dimensional space. In one, di in one dimensional space, uh, these operators act on the whole space. So the co dimension zero, so they actually zero symmetry. But this zero symmetry is uh, not groups like symmetry, it's a beyond the group symmetry, it's a beyond the group symmetry. Okay, and actually in conformal field theory, people study this uh, defect line in conformal field theory and uh, twist boundary condition. And uh, those, uh, those defect line twist boundary condition representing this symmetry twist. And uh, so, so actually uh, this kind of thing really studied uh, very well uh, uh, extensively in conformal field theory. And uh, recently uh, the, the, this kind of symmetry also is studied, uh, say like in this paper called the fusion category symmetry or quantum group symmetry, you know. And so, so, so this symmetry really uh, have been in the literature, in particularly in one dimensional space, you know, has been appeared in the literature. And uh, then here I want to say that uh, the charge here be interesting because uh, again, that's uh, if our, our a trace of a symmetry, a trace of representation, which is open string, which it kind of crosses the uh, edge of a patch operator then they do not commute. It turns out that uh, the commutation relation uh, give us this, uh, 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 this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this matrix, this, this, uh, this multiplied, this some, some not in, instead of a sign, we have a matrix here. And this matrix uh, uh, depend on this, uh, 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 this H, which is a, a patch operator is labeled by the H. Okay, uh, so, so there's some, so this really describes some non-trivial uh, charge, okay. But anyway, the, the, the key point is that uh, this kind of uh, the boundary of a charge are labeled by the H, okay? And, uh, and again, we have a trivial one morphism. Those are, those are line, this line object is a object, okay? And the point of object is a one morphism. Then this, uh, this uh, again, this uh, local symmetric operator is a two morphism. And these three layers in together, we claim they should form a two vector G. They should form a two vector G. And so therefore this, uh, uh, this kind of a beyond the group uh, one symmetry in two dimensional space is really characterized by this uh, two vector G where G is uh, uh, not really. Okay. So this is a, uh, this is a, a kind of a, 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 a example of how this, uh, how this very generalized symmetry uh, can be systematically described by this uh, fusion higher category. No, this is so. This a, this a fusion higher category is really a very uh, is a, a right mathematics to describe generalized symmetry rather than group. So it's a, instead it's a group is no longer seems it's not a proper thing to describe a symmetry, but a fusion higher category is a proper mathematical uh, framework to describe a symmetry. So that's a point I try to say. But however, uh, so this is say. The symmetry are classified by group, the higher symmetry are classified by higher group. But for this more general algebraic higher symmetry, we, we just try to argue or demonstrate using example, they are described by fusion higher category. But the higher here that uh, 
not every fusion higher category describes symmetry, only a special kind of fusion higher category describes symmetry. So what kind of a fusion category? For example, in one dimension symmetry, and in one dimension, the symmetry in one dimension are described by symmetric fusion category, not arbitrary fusion category. So from this example, you can see that uh, only symmetric fusion category describe a symmetry in one dimension. So in general, in higher dimension, uh, what kind of a fusion category describe algebraic higher symmetry? It turns out that uh, uh, we have a proposal that uh, we propose that uh, the so-called local fusion uh, N category is a generalization of a symmetric fusion category. So the symmetric fusion one category can be generalized to N category. This generalization, we call this a local fusion N category. And this local really means that uh, uh, there is a so-called top faithful functor and, uh, and uh, uh, which map this, uh, this local fusion category into the NVAC uh, C, NVAC. Uh, this, uh, this NVAC is uh, this, uh, we call the trivial fusion category. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure this is uh, properly defined, uh, but the, the idea is that, uh, you know, my understanding of higher category is very limited. Uh, but the idea is that uh, this uh, function really map object to object, morphing to morphing. So this uh, every level has a map and they, they, they keep some relation between them. And this uh, top faithful really means that this function uh, is injective at the top morphism level. And we didn't specify at the lower morphism level, what are they? Uh, we don't specify, but uh, we, we do require they are injective at the top morphism level. So we call that the top faithful. And so, and actually there's many different way to generalize. And we think maybe this is a proper generalization for our purpose to define algebraic uh, higher symmetry. Okay. And uh, so why, uh, so physically, uh, 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 physically uh, is, uh, is falling and uh, uh, this uh, function really means that ignore the symmetry, okay? Because uh, when you have a symmetry, then you allow symmetry to break. So it means uh, you break symmetry, you have no symmetry. So you allow, you ignore the symmetry. So when you have a symmetry, then you assume without symmetry, it's also present. It's a, it's a possibility, it's a case. So this function is really describing how we ignore the symmetry. So this map, really the map to ignore the symmetry. This NVAC is a fusion category describe a, describe a trivial symmetry. If there's no symmetry, that's NVAC. So this beta really say, we ignore the symmetry, then we have this uh, uh, functor. Maybe you should call the fiber functor to go to the NVAC, ignore the symmetry. Then actually, then at the top level, uh, we have a local symmetric operator, which is actually the subset of a local operator. You know, the local symmetric operator is a subset of the local operator, which in, with some additional conditions. So we just impose some, some condition like this. So if we ignore this condition, if we ignore this condition, then we would have uh, this uh, a local operator rather than local symmetric operator. So therefore, this is the reason to explain why this uh, map at the top level should be injective. It's just embedded into this uh, uh, local operator, okay? And uh, we hope this is uh, this top level may be sufficient. Once we define the top level, it should have this structure. Then the other lower level, I hope it follows, you know? This may be wishful thinking, if it doesn't work, then we have to work harder to find some additional structure, additional condition. Um, but at the moment, we hope uh, this, as long as we specify the top level, then the other lower level will follow. So this is the motivation uh, why, we in, why we conjecture that uh, this local fusion category is top faithful, replacing the group to describe the most general uh, symmetry. So that mm -hmm. is a, that's the point. So that Victor asked if it's possible to make the definition explicit for n equals one. Uh, for n, n to one, uh, I don't know. It's when to one. It does say like uh, this may be theorem. Uh, maybe 
uh, when you have this uh, one fusion category with this uh, with this uh, fiber functor, it has a symmetric fusion category, where with uh, no fermion actually, it's a uh, with uh, it's only boson, no fermion. Uh, so okay, basically, I, that that is that's basically uh, the uh, the consequence of that. I um, well, so one I, one comment that's, on, that's probably true. Yeah, uh, is that if you usually to get rep G instead of rep of a Hopf algebra, you would have a braided fiber functor. So so there would be a braided fusion n category with a braided fiber functor to vector spaces would be what otherwise you okay. have Hopf algebras uh, that aren't necessarily rep G. Um, okay. So is there, is there some braiding condition that's inside this? Um, Maybe. Yeah. This is a. Yeah. This is a, this is a uh, this is a very good point. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's a hidden braiding condition here, and uh, uh, this braiding condition actually is a uh, in this uh, local operator. Okay. So uh, the physics are sloppy. But the, we have example, low corporate actually means a bosonic trivial braiding. So you can see in the symmetric fusion category, some operator may have maybe fermion. We could have fermion, this super, super vacuum space. Here we don't even allow that because uh, our object are really low corporator. And uh, so there's tensor product, just tensor product. And uh, so they are really, uh, so this, uh, when I say local, probably that's, a, that's, a, that's a, our secret way to input this uh, braiding. So there, so so there's some some braiding and uh, they are symmetric, uh, maybe hidden here, yeah, yeah. That's a very very good point, yeah. And uh, so, uh, uh, so indeed, this this local the algebra local symmetric operator, because uh, because they are, they are based on local operator, and uh, the uh, their product are uh, really is automatically symmetric means uh, like a. A at the side x times b at a y is naturally equal to b at a y and a at x. So, so, so there's a, a so order doesn't mean anything as long as x and y are far apart. And so this structure is a, is me putting by hand at the beginning. Okay. So, so since the braiding became important, so now, now let's come to the, this is very natural to come to this place. Uh, uh, so actually, so there's an even bigger, even more general picture, which we call holographic picture. And uh, so where, where the braiding became explicit and important. So here, we, we, as, a, as we mentioned in our know, first, first example and second example, this is Z2, zero symmetry. The Z2, zero symmetry, and the Z to one symmetry, we we are, we already show that their local they are operator algebra for local symmetry operator actually is isomorphic, so they are, they are really the same. And for the zero symmetry, we view this uh, we view the patch operator as a symmetry transformation, and the end of a string operator is our symmetry charge. Okay. However, for the Z21 symmetry, we view the string operator as our symmetry transformation. And the boundary of a patch operator is our symmetry charge. <laughs> okay. And the certain here for zero symmetry is a boundary of a string operator, which is a point like is our symmetry charge. Here's a boundary of patch operator is a symmetry charge. So you can see that the operator algebra is the same. We just uh, assign different thing as a symmetry and a different thing as a charge. So this assignment is different. So basically they are the, the, they are the same. Okay. And uh, so, so from this point of view, we can see that uh, uh, these, two, these two operator algebra really isomorphic and they should really describe the same symmetry. But however, our point of view of viewing symmetry using transformation point of view, like, uh, uh, like uh, the zero symmetry is generated by patch operator and the one symmetry is generated by the string operator. And this point of view say these two seems very different symmetry, but they are actually equivalent. So, so, so here we have this uh, equivalence relation between symmetry. So there's a, uh, so, so, this, uh, so we can say these two, these, uh, the, the N rep G and N vec G describing equivalent symmetry. So these are two local fusion higher category are really describing equivalent symmetry. So therefore we have an equivalence class 
an equivalence relation between local fusion and higher category. And uh, so what is also this kind of equivalence relation uh, between this local fusion higher category, which you, we can see that from this categorical point of view, that those two symmetry are really equivalent. So what is those uh, uh, equivalence relation? How to see this? Okay, so maybe, uh, Maybe five more minutes. I, I would uh, uh, finish. Yeah, I think. Uh, no, no problem. Yeah, yeah, we we got off track with the yeah. zoom bombing. So yeah, yeah. take your time. And here, I uh, 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 I just want to say that uh, 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 actually, this operator algebra. Actually, correspond to the braided fusion category. So the braiding is there. And uh, again, I cannot prove it. And uh, this is a, a physicist way of proof using some very simple example and uh, try to conjecture some uh, general structure. And here, as I mentioned, that uh, and this, uh, this, uh, this, this two, these two uh, algebra really like a join two string. Is like a fusion of and a string. Here we join two patch. It's like a fusion for boundary of a patch. Okay, so therefore this kind of algebra is like a fusion of a point object, and this kind of algebra is like a fusion of a line-like object. Okay, and uh, so this operator, operator just the, the two patch operator multiply together, we get a bigger patch operator can be viewed as a fusion of a patch boundary. Okay, and then, and this of this kind of relation, the relation between string and the patch operator, which become non-trivial when the string get across the patch, is like a braiding. You know, if you view this as view this different order of operator as a stacking in time direction, so we we first have a loop, then we have a string, or we first have string, then have a loop. You can view this some space time process. It's like this a string. Go around this boundary of loop, <laughs> so like a braiding. Okay, so this the second part of this operator algebra is a braiding. So this observation really tell us. I think this maybe is true that when you write an operator algebra in this way, the operator algebra actually is a braided fusion category, actually a braided fusion higher category. I should say the n category in n dimension. Okay, and uh, and so therefore. The equivalent symmetry really means that the Brady fusion category could be equivalent. And uh, so from here, we can see that uh, uh, if you look at the fusion of a string operator, uh, we get this uh, rep Z2. So the rep Z2 is coming from the fusion of a string operator. And the vec Z2 really coming from the fusion of a patch operator. <laughs> okay. And actually, these both are part of a bigger operator algebra. So the whole structure is the whole thing. This is a bigger operator algebra. And, uh, and the operator algebra is a braid fusion category. And uh, so the two, two, these two fusion, two local fusion categories describing equivalent symmetry because of this braid fusion category is the same. So we have a map from the uh, local fusion category to braid the fusion category. And, uh, and this map tell us they are equivalent or not. And this map probably can already guess it. It's a famous dream field center, or maybe it's a generalization. The dream field center is really for the one category. And, uh, and this, the statement we made here is, uh, is for general n category. So for every uh, fusion n category, uh, there is a center, uh, which is map data to the braided fusion uh, uh, category. And uh, in our language, it's like a, when you map a local fusion, N category into the braided fusion category is really try to find its operator algebra for this kind of symmetry. Yeah, so this is a uh, this is a way uh, to to understand that. So therefore, so therefore, these two local fusion two category are equivalent because they have same center. Their center is the same, and so this is really uh, 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 another main message. Is a, so the so the generalized symmetry are described by the local fusion n category, but their equivalents are described by their center. If their center is the same, 
this symmetry actually is the same symmetry. So we call them equivalent uh, symmetry. Okay. And uh, so actually, uh, there is a, a, a there is a, 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 a physical way uh, 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 let me see. Okay, yeah. Well, he, here I want to uh, say the one thing that, uh, so from here you see that uh, this, uh, uh, the symmetry, the symmetry are really described by this uh, operator algebra. So, so we should use this point of view. So therefore a symmetry are really described by the Bray diffusion category. So therefore we should call this a Bray diffusion category a symmetry. Okay. Instead of calling this a local fusion higher category a symmetry. Okay. But uh, uh, so, so therefore because this motivation, so we call this uh, the symmetry defined via Bray diffusion category a categorical symmetry. So this here, we try to uh, introduce a notion of a categorical symmetry. The categorical symmetry actually refer to this, uh, uh, refer to this uh, uh, operator algebra. So those, uh, this algebra is our categorical symmetry. I'll refer to this uh, few Bray diffusion category. Okay. So we can see that uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, two uh, symmetry are equivalent if they have same center, means if they have same categorical symmetry. So categorical symmetry is taking the center, okay. However, not every Bray diffusion category describe a categorical symmetry. <laughs> you know, uh, the, uh, the categorical symmetry which is coming from the symmetry are coming from a special kind of a, a Bray diffusion category. And this, uh, the physical the reason for that is the following. You know, our operator algebra is a form by the, all the local symmetric uh, operator. There's an O here. You can see, for example, we can consider a sub-algebra, taking a subset of a local symmetric operator to construct sub-algebra. And the sub-algebra actually is not a proper uh, Bray diffusion category. And uh, it's, it's something bad. Okay, so it's very important to have uh, all the local symmetric operator. But what mean by all, you know? You know, when you define Hilbert space as a product local Hilbert space, we know what this all means. But uh, from categorical point of view, this all really means the following. Here, the message here that uh, all means that uh, this uh, Bray diffusion category must be non-degenerate. So, so this, uh, this non-degenerate re requirement is a correspond to physical requirement that uh, this uh, local symmetric operator algebra is formed by all the local symmetric operators. All means uh, non-degenerate. But uh, you know, non-degenerate will define uh, for the Bray diffusion one category. You know, we are familiar with that. This uh, this uh, Mugler center, usually Mugler center define that. But we have a tremendous difficulty to generalize Mugler center to higher category to define non-degenerate. And then uh, and then there is a uh, and then it then we 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 think. We use this to define non-degeneracy. That is, uh, from the Bray diffusion category, we can do the condensation completion. We, we should, well, maybe I will describe it just in a moment. And then to get the, to get the fusion category, then take uh, this uh, center again. Uh, if this center is a trivial, then we say it's non-degenerate. And uh, but certainly center also not well defined, maybe for higher category. But anyway, and this but this maybe. Easier than Mugler center. I, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I don't know which one is easier. Well, the general the Mugler center to higher category or general the center to higher category, but uh, somehow we need to, we need to generalize this concept to define non degeneracy. And non degeneracy is means uh, some completeness of a local symmetric operator. If you take a sub algebra, then the this uh, Bray diffusion we still get the Bray diffusion category, but it's no longer non degenerate. Yeah. Uh, so the sub algebra will have this problem. And uh, so this became a uh, 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 next level that uh, that uh, categorical symmetry or this essence of symmetry is uh, described by this uh, uh, non-degenerate uh, Bray diffusion category. Yeah. So that's uh, another uh, message. Okay. So uh, in one minute, let me finish this. And uh, although there's other things, but uh, but I think this uh, and. Uh, 
to, to really finish this really that uh, this uh, uh, actually this uh, this uh, this uh, this, uh, this uh, taking the center have a physical uh, meaning taking this center all have the physical meaning the physical meaning actually is a boundary block relation and uh, you know that it's a higher category described this uh, uh, co-dimension one co-dimension two co-dimension three object so those objects in physics is called excitation in topological order. Okay, for example, a topological order in n plus one dimensional space are described by this uh, uh, a fusion n plus one category. Okay, and uh, and then and then this uh, the topological order uh, is n plus one dimension. They have a boundary which is n dimension. The boundary also have an excitation, which can be co-dimension one respect to boundary or co-dimension two respect to boundary. So boundary excitation are also described by a fusion n category. So, so therefore we have a fusion n plus one category describing bulk excitation, and we have a fusion n category described by boundary excitation. And the relation between these two fusion categories is precisely uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, center. Because uh, in the bulk, and uh, this is called dimensional one extension, they are all, all descendant, means that they are formed by the lower dimensional excitations. So we can remove them. Okay. And removing them is called the looping in category language. So really uh, followed by this paper, which, which uh, this paper really emphasizing the importance of this looping, de looping. Then, then if, you, if you start with a Brady diffusion category, we can add back this co-dimension one extension. It's called a de-looping. So this de-looping really like like, a, uh, like adding back co-dimension one extension. Okay. And uh, so with this looping, de-looping, then we can really understand this uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this this uh, this uh, this uh, this center as a boundary box relation. You know, taking center uh, really like a map the using the boundary category to determine the bulk category. So there is a holographic principle topology order here. That the boundary uniquely define the bulk. Well, this is the cut off. The boundary uniquely determine the bulk, okay. So therefore, uh, if, I know the, if I know the boundary category and we can take in the center to open the braided diffusion category, which is determine the bulk excitation minus this co-dimension one excitation. So therefore this, uh, so therefore, therefore, this taking center have a very physical meaning, is which is a boundary bulk uh, relation. Okay, and so therefore, this uh, uh, this understanding uh, the symmetry as a fusion category, basically, really try to say that we try to symmetry can be viewed as a, some special boundary of a topology order, and the topology order actually is a categorical symmetry, which is the essence of a symmetry. The equivalence class of a symmetry corresponds to topological order in one higher dimension. So, which is quite a, from physics point of view, it's quite an amazing way uh, to see uh, how symmetry turns out to be something that looks so foreign. And but but however, at the moment we believe uh, this maybe is a better way, as a more general way to understand the symmetry. And using this the more general way, we can really understand. Uh, a lot of issue more directly, like uh, how to classify a uh, topological order with a different symmetry, how to gauge a symmetry, and how to uh, have a anomaly in symmetry. And since all, all the questions associated with symmetry can be asked and answered in, in this framework. And you get a quite interesting uh, categorical answer to all those euro questions, and which I don't have to describe uh, today, but uh, you know, you have this long paper which uh, describes some of those uh, thoughts. Um, but today, I really am emphasizing on um, using some example to see uh, how this uh, different way, way to view symmetry uh, uh, come about. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Shao Gahan. I'll go ahead and stop the recording.